what we're seeing is a success that every year they're increasing their revenue by a minimum of hundred thousand dollars and they're adding an employee every single year so after five years if i have five employees wow but it's because we're bringing in business leaders to be a part of that conversation and guess what that business leader that's facilitating can connect them to other resources in the ecosystem. So it's not just you, Cameron, trying to make connections. Now business leaders are making the connections. The thing that you wanted to start here in Fort Worth, the business leaders are doing now. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and on today's show, we're talking about how to energize Main Street businesses through entrepreneurship. My guest today is Jose Alfaro, CEO of CoStarters, an organization that runs simple business programs to help creative ventures thrive. Over the last decade, CoStarters has served 300 plus communities and helped over 20,000 small businesses. And they boast a 97% survival rate for the companies they serve. Jose, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Oh, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. So glad you can come on the show today. But in your own words, start us off with just a brief overview to explain what CoStarters is and what CoStarters does. Yeah, so the best way for me to explain it, it, I'll do it two ways. One for the people who are in this field and for those who are not in this field. So we work at the intersection of community development and economic development. So what does that actually mean? We believe that entrepreneurs need community to survive. So not only just providing technical assistance or mentorship or coaching, they need a group of peers, they need a group of experienced entrepreneurs, and they need their community, the, the people that live in these cities to support them. If you bring all those things together with programs, resources, uh, mentors, coaches, you'll see that these entrepreneurs have a higher success rate in starting their businesses. So what we do is we provide, we create programs, we create frameworks, we create uh, different types of pitch ideas, and we sell all our curated uh, programming structures, resources to cities so that they can deliver, the, deliver these programs to the entrepreneurs. And the reason that we work with organizations like, like the city or co-working spaces or entrepreneurship centers is because those places have the trust of the community. It would cost us a lot of money for to market to get the trust of these inter individuals who have amazing dreams to give us their information or to trust us with their with their babies where those organizations in the community so think of um ensemble right great trust in the community she's doing a lot of great work in building that trust they trust her more than they trust me an outsider who's like who are you what do you want with my money <laughs> right and this so, is ensemble co-working yeah, tamara yeah. Payne, my yep. ecosystem bestie yeah, and yeah. a former podcast guest. Yes. but keep going yeah so so like so we work with them and saying hey we're going to make this easy for you you want to help entrepreneurs. We have all the tools and resources. Don't recreate the wheel. Continue to build that trust in the community. So that's how we work. That's what CoStarters does in a nutshell. So Very cool. Well, thanks. That helps a lot. So I've always loved the name. Tell me about the name <laughs> CoStarters. Yeah. So there's not this like magic thing that you guys think of. So actually the way that it came about was one, the biggest thing is that there was this huge stigma around entrepreneur, the word entrepreneur when we first started this. Back in 2008, it all started in Chattanooga, and we were trying to help artists, and artists didn't think they were entrepreneurs. It actually had a huge stigma against the word. And so we we're like, well, we'll just call them starters. And that's how it started. And when we were thinking about building the program, uh, the curriculum, the accelerator for these artists and creatives, uh, we, there's a lot like Launchpad and all, these, you know, all the names you can think of. And uh, one of our creative directors uh, at that point where I worked for the nonprofit uh, CoLab in Chattanooga, she's like, oh, we know we did this thing called co-starters. Like, why don't we just use that? Or I think it was like get started or something like that. And then we kind of came together. So the co actually can stand for a lot of things. It can stand for community, collaboration, connection, whatever you want to call it. But the starter is the actual emphasis is that we believe that um, we should be calling people starters instead of entrepreneurs. Very cool. And so, so tell me again about how, give me the origin story. How did it start? Yeah. 2008 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yep. Uh, how did it start? So Volkswagen was coming to Chattanooga, right? And they kind of took a scope of the land and then the, a lot of, you know, long story short, they were like, hey, if we're going to move to Chattanooga, you guys need to 
fix Chattanooga, right? It was called one of the dirtiest cities in America and it was still not there. So there were two initiatives. One, the city was going to revamp the entire riverfront, redo that, right? Create shopping centers and all that kind of fun stuff for them. But then there was some money that was private and public funded to revitalize the Main Street. And so they created an organization called Create Here. And the goal was like, how can we revitalize our Main Street through local, our local people? But one of the things that we were seeing, we were missing that like heartbeat of a Main Street. And so we were like, well, what if we invited artists to come and move to Chattanooga and see what happens? And so artists were moving in and that was one of the first initiatives. And all these artists were creating things, right? And not only creating, but doing things like dancing and all these fun activities around the community. But none of our storefronts were being filled. <laughs> well, it was because these entrepreneurs or these, these artists didn't th- consider themselves business owners, right? So the next initiative was like, well, how do we help them create businesses, right? Because like we got to put people into these storefronts and create this community. And so we brought in different types of pro- entrepreneurship programs and technical assistance and accelerators. And I mean, they, you know, kicked us out like to like, keep us away, like get out of here. Don't talk to me. And so uh, Enoch, uh, one of the founders of, of, of CoStarters um, and Create Here, uh, was like, what if we just have a different conversation with them? And so we would go and have conversations with the artists and say like, hey, you already create pottery. Right? You already create these beautiful mugs. What if we showed you how to replace your day job income by doing this? Yes, show me that. And so what we learned is that we had to understand, get to their I want to like, like make them lower, but like got to get to their understanding, how they understood things so that they can understand it. But it was all about them. And so that's where one of our philosophies came in. We have three philosophies. We invest in individuals. So that was one. Like we got to focus on the individual. We can't be u- using these jargon masters and, you know, uh, master degrees in business uh, or MBA program, you know, language to serve our local artists and our local entrepreneurs. It doesn't work. They don't understand what that means. So then as we were bringing all these programs in through, we were realizing all this stuff was built for educated and high growth tech companies, right? And so that's when the whole tech stars thing started going, Y Combinator stuff started coming out. And so we had an idea. It was like, well, what if we take the best tool that's happening in Silicon Valley and we just simplify them to serve our entrepreneurs, our, our, our artists? And so that was when our second philosophy came in. So everything that we do, we write at a seventh grade level because we want to make it accessible for everybody. So we just explain what they're going to do. So an example of that would be, hey, that big idea, that big dream they want to do. Oh, we want to have a start a restaurant. Great. What can you do tomorrow? And we ask them like literally that question, what can you do tomorrow? And they have a hard time. They're like, I don't know. No, think about it. What can you do tomorrow? And they come up with it. Great. That's your MVP. That's your minimal viable product. So when somebody asks you, great, love your idea. What's your MVP? You have your MVP. It's the way you test if there's a need in the market for what you have. And so that's how we simplify it. So we're not taking away from the knowledge or the education piece of, of technical assistance. We're just simplifying the process. And so in that, um, one of the things that uh, we really believe was important was community. Um, people don't like to do things alone. But somehow through social media and through the internet and everything's kind of been siloed. And we like if you look at the success of the 1960s of like the business boom, it's because people were in community, the the country clubs, the chambers that were all connected. Oh, I know what you need. Let me connect you to, to Susie or let me connect you to Bob. And there was this connection where we don't have anymore. And, and I'm not trying to take a stab at the chambers or anything like that. I, you know, I, I, there there's a need for traditional economic development support systems people's lives have changed and we need to serve them a little bit differently. And so um, everything that we did in our programming, we did as a community. So that's our third philosophy. Everything's done in community. So through that, I share that story because it's really important about how we came about because it wasn't like we just sat there. We have a solution. It was actually a progression of things that happened. From that uh, collab, we were growing uh, Memphis, Tennessee and uh, Detroit, Michigan called us and said, hey, we love what you're doing. What's the success story? It was co-starters. So we went out there and trained them and we're trying to, and we're like, wait, we might have something here. And it started to grow. And we had, I think, like 20 communities that were using co-starters. 
uh, Colab, who was the local entrepreneur hub center in Chattanooga, were like, hey, we have two business, two organizations and can their competing missions. Um, we need to change. And so in 2016, we went private. We, we, we made it a business and bought the IP out. And, and now we serve, uh, have served over 300 communities across the nation. Outstanding. Such a cool story. And, and you know, I think it's interesting because it was founded in Chattanooga, still have a, a strong presence yeah. there. I know you have a distributed team, but you're based in Fort Worth, yes. which is how you ended up on Innovate <laughs> Fort Worth. Yeah. So tell us the story of how you got involved with co-starters personally yeah. and how you ended up in Fort Worth. Yeah. So uh, I ended up in Fort Worth through some, I was finding myself through a spiritual journey. Um, a lot of that stuff didn't work out, but I got to meet the team at Colab and what they were doing with co starters And so I got involved and loved it. Um, and my experience in business, I've had, I've started businesses before, um, you know, where I it was alone, I did it alone and I figured it out. I've also failed because I did it alone. So I had that business experience and I understood what they were doing. I just fell in love with it. So I just wanted to be a part of it. And so when they broke out to become a, a, a private company, uh, Enoch and, and Rebecca invited me to be a part of it. And, said, and these hey. were the two founders, Enoch the, and Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, the two, yeah. So they were the founders of the co starters program itself. So, um, and so I, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Like, let's, let's do this thing. And so uh, through multiple years and, and a lot of work and a lot of research, uh, I've grown the ranks and, and my experience in running uh, teams and fixing companies and building my own companies has led me to be CEO. Now, why I've moved back is kind of twofold. It's one was family. Uh, COVID hit. My wife was like, I need help. We have two little kids. I love them, but they can be a pain in the ass sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'll tell them too. So I'm like, one day you'll have kids too. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and so we just wanted to be closer to family. And now we get to drop off the kids with the in-laws and we're like, all right, great. We get to have some fun. Um, but the business side of it was, um, I wanted to build a bigger presence um, in Texas, Oklahoma, kind of the mid, mid region of, this, of the country, but also out west. And so it's a lot through a lot of personal relationship. And so it was intentional how I landed in Fort Worth um, because of my work. I wanted to be in an area where there was vibrancy and, and a culture and a, a sense of place. Um, the reason I do what co co like, I love business, but what I love more than business is I want to create places that I want to live in. And that's what I was looking for. So I looked at Waco, look at all these different cities. And if you're listening, nothing against you guys. It's just when I saw Fort Worth, I was like, I can see myself being not only a part of what's happening in Fort Worth, but also enjoy the people. Like there was something about it. Like there's something unique here, right? And I always say, and I go to a, to a city and I said, you have to find what's unique. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Don't be like Chattanooga. Don't be like Austin. What's unique about you? That's what's going to make you special. That's what people will rally around. If you tell them what we're going to be the next the next Austin, they're going to be like, well, move to Austin. I mean, people love their city, right? Business owners love their city, love their neighbors. Like they build relationships with them. Why are you trying to be somebody else, <laughs> right? And so I think with Fort Worth is, I think we're still trying to figure that out a little bit or that's what I sense, um, but we're getting closer and closer. And I think that thing that connects us all is the desire to really see Fort Worth be excellent and special, which not a lot of cities can say, right? Because I mean, money can take care of a lot of things, but that sense of place is, is really important. I think Fort Worth has always had that and protected that. Well, and I think one of the things that makes a city a great place to live and it makes it unique is small businesses, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's that restaurant with the funky concept or they're, yep. they're cooking grandma's recipes or yep. it's the ice cream shop or it's something like that. Sometimes those main street businesses are really what drives the yep. culture in a city. And those are not funded by McDonald's nope. and Chick-fil-A and those others. They are funded by yep. local people that need all the resources yep. that a group like CoStarters can help them yep. with. Yeah, I mean, I go out west and I see a bunch of food trucks, right? A lot of cities don't allow food trucks. Like, you go to Dallas, they can't be anywhere around except they're in that downtown little area. Here, they're all popping up all over and I'm like, this is great, right? Not only do they have amazing food, but you're helping a small business get started. So we poked around your website a little bit um, to try to understand some of the great programs and resources that you guys have developed and that you use as a part of the CoStarters program to support small businesses. Can you kind of give us a flyover of some of those? Give us a sense of what those what those are, how they were developed, and what they're meant to, to do? Yeah, so our flagship program is called CoStarters Core. It's a, a 10 week or multi-week program. It can be done in 10 weeks or 12 weeks. And the goal is to help people go through to go from an idea 
to action, right? So at the end of the program, they are actually working on their business. And we go through everything from understanding who their customers are, their personas, how are you gonna market to them, what's your competitive advantage, um, how are you gonna distribute it, operations, financials. We spent three weeks just on financials. Um, we want them to get paid immediately, right? A lot of entrepreneurs are like, I'll just be cheaper than the guy next door. Like, that's not the best strategy, right? And so, I, can, I mean, I, I go to a lot of Latin American uh, uh, businesses and I'm like, how much money do you have? They literally open their cash register, which is like whatever it's in here. And I'm like, wow. this is not good, right? Yeah. Um, they don't know any different, yeah. right? They just don't know. And so I'm like, okay, so we walk through that process. Um, but they also realize, is this, is this a hobby or is this a business, <laughs> right? Because then, you know, like, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. In Birmingham, there's this lady making scarves. She was charging $20 for these scarves, handmade scarves. She's like, well, I'm just going to charge a little bit more than Walmart charges. And I'm like, why? She's like, well, people won't pay that much. I'm like, okay, let's go back to your customer. Who's your customer? She's like, oh, people who, you know, like homemade things. Do you think people who, buy, who like homemade things are going to Walmart and buying? No. Okay. Like, let's think through that again, right? And so she's like, well, to make money, I got to charge $80. Okay. Test the market. She's like, I don't know. I was like, and again, it's this concern about the person, the individual. So I did a lot of work of like, what's your insecurities? Why don't you believe you're valuable? Like it's those questions that business doesn't teach you, <laughs> right? And so we're spending a lot of that individual connection there, but also the cohort, the, the peers that were in that cohort were like, hey, you're amazing. You're powerful. Like you're all this stuff, right? So giving her the confidence, charging $80, she's killing it now killing so she can hire people and she figured out like yeah my market may not be as big but i can make a living to the people that i need to focus on and that's who i serve and now she has a different you now she makes hats now and all the glove mittens and all that kind of stuff and but she knows who her market is and and that is the success of an entrepreneur so that's what our multi-week program does all our other programs have, are like workshops and boot camps they're all there to help create engagement and activity so that the hubs that we work with become the front door to any business idea. Our goal is to, you know, is for every idea to have a path, you know, and, and so that's how we work with them. So we have workshops that are three hours long, boot camps that are two day long. We have uh, pitch competition frameworks. We, I mean, anything that you need around events, we have it. <laughs> Very cool. I love that. So just in this conversation, there's definitely a, a focus at co-starters on the creatives, right? Creative entrepreneurs. And there's there's definitely a focus in letting the creative entrepreneurs lead the way. So yeah. this this kind of idea of leaders and feeders that the entrepreneurs should be the leaders. Yes. How has co-starters em embraced that and why as you've rolled out across the country? So the exact way that we do that is we bring in business leaders to facilitate the program. So instead of inviting an academic, or a policymaker to teach about entrepreneurship, we bring in a business leader who's been there before. And the other part of that is we train the business leader to be a facilitator, a coach, because you don't have all the answers, right? If I come to you and I say, hey, will my business succeed? That's a, I'm putting you in a really tough spot. <laughs> and most academics are like, well, what does the market say? What does the data say? And at the end of the day, people don't buy because the data says something. Like, I don't buy my car because the research said this. I buy it because the way it's going to make me feel, <laughs> right? So what I always say is, as a facilitator and as a business owner, say, what does your customer think? I'm not your customer. So what does your customer think? And I push them back on their customer. And so business leaders, training them is important for two aspects. One, build trust from the aspiring entrepreneur to know that there's somebody else who did it and they can see themselves being like, wow, I can be like that one day. Business owners by nature want to help people. So giving them those opportunities to do that. Second, it invites the business leaders to have a seat at the table at economic development. Small business leaders don't have a seat at the table. I mean, like, yes, they are involved in the chamber stuff, but they don't have a seat at the table when policies are making made. And so how do we get them invited to talk educatedly about things that are happening in the small business world. How has it worked? Well, it's our success rates. So we don't have self-guided programs. There's a lot of self-guided programs out there and I'm not knocking them. They're, they're needed in a sense, like I would say, but did you know that only 5% of the people actually complete those programs? Hmm. So if we're actually looking, do we really want to help businesses get started or are we just trying to get people into our content? And I, and I do really challenge that question because we have a 90% completion rate. 
And so because we are invested and intentional about the way that we want to serve them, because they're completing, they believe that their business will actually have legs to survive. They're tested it. And after the first year, they have an over 90% success rate. And so in over three years, out of those businesses that succeeded, there's multiple reasons why, but 70% of them stay in business after three years. Which so, is really, really good. Well, if you look at the national average. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Right? I think they're now saying it's 50, but I think it's actually lower than that. <laughs> right? And so, and after five years, I mean, you can't even, I mean, we're still working through the data to, to do our five year. But what we're seeing is a success that every year they're increasing their revenue by a minimum of $100,000 and they're adding an employee every single year. So after five years, I have five employees. Wow. But it's because we're bringing in business leaders to be a part of that conversation. And guess what? That business leader that's facilitating can connect them to other resources in the ecosystem. So it's not just you, Cameron, trying to make connections. Now business leaders are making the connections. The thing that you wanted to start here in Fort Worth, the business leaders are doing now. Yeah. But we have to give them a place and a platform to do that. Love it. That makes a ton of sense. I, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> uh, you said it very well. So, uh, founded in Chattanooga, you're here in Fort Worth. You mentioned Detroit and a few other cities. You're in 300 communities around the country. Can you kind of give us a sense of maybe a few other communities and, and the impact that CoStarters has been able to have on those local business communities? Okay, to answer your question, I just talked to somebody yesterday, and that what comes top of mind, right? I just I serve so many communities. There's so many stories. If you want to know the stories, go to our website, look at the blogs. We have we have stories of all our starters, stories of our communities. But yesterday, I had a conversation in West Palm Beach. The mayor had an initiative. He called it the Mayor's Academy, or the Jump, Mayor's Jumpstart Academy, and their goal was to help people get out of poverty through business, right? So business is not the thing. It's the goal is to get people out of poverty. Love it. That, I mean. Our mission is to empower and equip individuals and communities to thrive through entrepreneurship. So our mission is not just businesses getting started, it's to actually people to like thrive. Now, what thrive means is different for everybody, but the lady, or, or Tiffany yesterday, she's amazing, right? And she's telling me, like, this person started this business and this person, and the mayor's so happy because we finally have local small businesses working and doing business in the city where they couldn't do that before because they didn't have the structure, they didn't have the systems, they didn't have the, the things in place. We helped 10 new businesses stop being side hustles and actually become businesses in one year. That's be, and, and she's like, and we've helped over 50 people get connected to resources. And I look at that story and I'm like, guys, like that's in West Palm Beach. Like there's a lot of stuff happening out there, but it was the intention of the city saying, we're gonna help people get out of poverty. And, and it is, it's serving low income marginalized communities. So black communities and Latino communities, right? So good that they're about to increase from 10 to help 30 next year. So I have another community out in California that same thought process, they're like, well, we're gonna test this out. They did one cohort of 12 people, we went so well that the foundation gave them more money, like whatever you want, but they want to support a hundred people next year. <laughs> wow. Right? And so it's always hard to get started because you're teaching somebody something new. Yeah. Because the biggest challenge that they say is that we can do this ourselves. And I always say this, what are you doing on your own? Yes, I know that there's content out there, but you're having to find the speakers. You're having to create content that's engaging. Like we went through that process and we have the success rate to do that. And so the, the, the goal can't just be, we need to provide technical assistance. No, what is your meta goal? In five years, what do you want to see? So anytime I start a conversation with a new community, the first question I ask them is like, what, what's your goal in five years? What does success look like for you in five years? And if it says there's more businesses getting started, I'm like, okay, that, we may not be a good partner because that just can't be the ultimate answer. What about the person? What about the community? What about the culture, right? So like Fort Worth, the near South Side, amazing, love it. I mean, that's one of the things that drew me here. I go there once a week. <laughs> I love it, right? I love that culture. I love, like, there's just something special about that. That's what people want. And, and if you're not creating that, then, then, then I, I do ask them, what are we creating? More wealth for who? I love it. Well, it sounds like we, we need something like this in Fort Worth. So I, I'm working on it. <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. So Jose, uh, the question we always ask on the show is, who is your favorite innovator in Fort Worth? Ah, man. So 
I always have a hard time with this because I don't ever like to pick one person out. Um, so I want to answer it a different way. I, I want to say it's the small business owners that are creating the culture in the near south side, in the square, um, in the different communities, right? Um, the, the murals, the, the bakeries, the coffee shops, the places that I can go and participate in the love that they have um, and, and sharing their love with me. Like, it's just special, right? Um, you know, and the reason they're not, they're maybe not innovators, right? But I, but I do want to challenge Fort Worth to think about it this way. For them, they innovated, right? For them, it's their special recipe. It's their unique way they serve you. It's how do I leave my nine to five job to do this? I mean, talk about innovation. Like that's one of the biggest challenges that an entrepreneur has to take on, especially if there's not a lot of support systems for them. Like in high growth, like we have tech stars, we have all these opportunities for high growth businesses that they can, yeah, I have a roadmap to success. But what about these business owners that don't really have that roadmap? Um, and I just, whenever I don't see programs like ours in a city, it doesn't have to be co-starters. I know you guys had builders and backers uh, a, a few years ago. I don't care. Great program. Because that's what they need. Because if they're doing it on their own, they're innovating. They're having to figure things out day in and day out until they get to a brick and mortar that they can say, look at my special place. Right. Um, you know, so, so that's, what I would, that's how I would answer it. So. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Jose, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate for Worth. If you want to learn more about co-starters, you can visit their website at co-starters.co. That's co-starters.co. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and be sure to leave us a review. If you want to join the conversation, follow us on social media at HSC Innovates. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch from Rob Makes Pods. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork.